start talking about the four market types here and let's go through uh, perfect competition first perfect competition is a market structure with many firms and each of these firms are selling the same identical product and many buyers and there is no restriction on entry of new firms to the industry so if you make up a firm and um, and you sell the same product then you can just enter that enter that market both firms and buyers are all informed regarding prices and products of all uh, the firms in the industry so uh, next monopolistic competition is a market structure with many firms each firm produces a similar but slightly different product uh, and this is what we call product uh, differentiation uh, each firm has some type of market power uh, some uh, type of following for example some some t some some following by loyal customers and there are no restrictions on entry of new firms to the industry oligopoly uh, has small number of firms that compete against each other uh, the firms might uh, produce almost identical products or differentiated products and there are barriers to entry to keep the number of competitions or competing firms small in the market so for example you could think gas stations uh, gas stations are uh, oligopoly so a monopoly this is a market structure in which only one firm produces the entire output of the industry and there are no close substitutes for the product uh, the, there are barriers to entry which may be set up by government i think and this protects the firm from competition by entering firms so an example of this would be like your electricity provider or public transit those are monopolies now, measures of concentration. Economists uses two measures of uh, market concentration, the four firm concentration ratio, which is the percentage of the total industry sales accounted for by the four largest firms in the industry, and the herfindahl hirschman index, the HHI. And this is the square of uh, per the percentage market share of each firm summed over the largest 50 firms in the industry. So, um, so we have 50 largest firms then we just take their percentage of the market their market share so for example uh, let's talk about the fast food industry we could have McDonald's taking like 75% of the, the total market share and then we have Burger King taking uh, 5% of or 20% of the total market share and it just keeps on going down and you square them all up and then you sum them all together and uh, that's the HHI and the larger the measure of market concentration the less competition that exists in that industry now the limitations of the concentration measure uh, the main limitations of only using um, the concentration what the heck the, or the concentration measures to determine the market structure or the geographical scope of the market the barriers to entry and firm turnover and the correspondence between a market and an industry these things <coughs> excuse me these factors we don't know any of these so they're the main limitations of using concentration measures to determine the market structure uh, market coordination, markets coordinate production, uh, outsourcing is pretty much buying parts and products from other firms and that is an example of market coordination of production and I'm, I'm sure before I even explained outsourcing you guys already knew what it is because it's so uh, big nowadays. Uh, however, firms coordinate more production than do market. So why is it that firms coordinate more production than markets? Well, firms coordinate production more efficiently than markets. Uh, we have this huge market. It doesn't know how to coordinate anything. It just got, well, how I learned it. The market is kind of insane. So that is why we leave things to the firms. Firms actually have people running it. And they actually went through school to actually learn how to run run companies efficiently or run production more efficiently in this case so this is why firms uh, firms uh, coordinate production better than markets in my point of view but here are four key ideas that make firms more efficient they are lower transaction costs uh, transaction costs 
are the cost from finding someone to do business with, re reaching an agreement on the price and other aspects of the exchange and ensuring that the terms of the agreements are filled. There's economies of scale. This occurs when the cost of producing a unit decreases as the output rate increase as the output rate increases. So as you make more and more and more output, the cost decreases. Economies of scope. This is when a firm can use specialized inputs to make a range of different goods at a lower cost than otherwise. So uh, the, like the average total cost of production decreases as the result of increasing the number of different goods made. Economies of team production. Uh, individuals specialize in mutually supportive tasks. So for example, in McDonald's, we have the grill cook, the cashier, they all support each other, they're all part of a team, and we need that team production to actually get the orders to the customers. And it looks like that's it. Now, before we end this video, I just want you to remember that the most important things you should remember is economies of scale. This comes up really often, uh, not only in microeconomics, but in other places too. And the, uh, these other three parts, I have I haven't really seen them much, uh, other than in this in the in the microeconomics course that I did, which I am reteaching right now, and uh, outsourcing that is also something that you should know, and these limitations is well you don't have to know that anyways, uh, the HHI and four firm concentration ratio these are just good to know as I can't imagine any professor would give you questions on these but I could be wrong, and you should know the definitions of. Um, Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, uh, oligopoly, and monopoly. Remember, monopoly is just one firm. Uh, oligopoly is a small number of firms. Mon monopolistic is many firms, but each producing something similar, but they are slightly different in some cases. And perfect competition is pretty much a lot of firms producing the same thing. And for these four market types, uh, I think they should really only occur in... Um, like in the microeconomics course or any kind of economics course that you take outside of that you don't really refer to them uh, other than that uh, it looks like this is the end of this chapter i hope you enjoyed it uh, i know it was optional but if you watch it all thanks a lot uh, please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already and i'll catch you guys later